Bosco was, the, was ordained to the gospel ministry in 1944 and appointed principal of Spicer Memorial College High School. And at that time, their son, Carter Jesse William, was born in 1946. Rosco also served as Education and Youth Secretary of the Western India Union at the same time. But later that year, he left Spicer College to assume leadership of the South and Central Maharashtra missions while continuing to serve the Western India Union as Education and Youth Department Secretary. In 1947, the Lauris took an extended furlough so that he could complete a master's degree in administrative psychology from the University of Denver. They returned to India in 1949 and were placed at Lowry Memorial High School in Bangalore. That institution had developed from the South India Training School, which Roscoe Lowry's father, Elder Gigi Lowry, had established in 1915. Roscoe served as principal of Lowry School for a year, and then he was elected Education Secretary for the Southern Asia Division. The Lowry's served at Salisbury Park that term and then moved to the US where Roscoe engaged in doctoral study at the University of Southern California, receiving a degree in educational philosophy and psychology in 1958. The Lowry's returned to India and he resumed his post as Education Secretary of Southern Asia Division. At the end of that term, the Lowry's applied for permanent return to the US uh, Mrs. Lowry was sick, and he accepted a position at La Sierra College as head of the Department of Educational Psychology and Education. However, two months later, in a surprise move, the nominating committee at the General Conference, when they could not come to an easy decision as to who should be president of Southern Asia Division, they elected Roscoe Lowry as president of Southern Asia Division. He was only 44 years old, with limited ministerial experience, and no experience as either a division or union officer. However, once he was elected, his administrative ability was never questioned, and he was re-elected President of Southern Asia in 1966, in 1970, and 1975. In 1962, when Lowry became the President of the Division, the membership of our division was about 27,000. When he left office in 1980, the membership was 106,000. At the 1980 General Conference, Roscoe Lowry made it quite clear that he believed it was time for a national to take over the mantle of leadership from him. But he was only 62 years old and not ready to retire. And so first he filled a vacancy in the publishing house as editor, and then he accepted the post of field secretary for the division, and he used his experience as a senior statesman till his retirement. They remained at Salisbury Park for a number of years, but eventually returned to the US to settle in Chihalis, Washington in 1987. Among other things, Dr. Lowry will be remembered for raising the remuneration of national workers. He dismantled provisions that gave special privileges to foreigners and Anglo-Indians, such as the star category and the section two category. His administration was affected by the ruling of the tax commission at Maharashtra, and so they attempted several solutions, one of which was the formation and the incorporation of the church as Servsda, a private limited company. But most of all, the Lowry's will be remembered for the friendships that they developed with people, the local people, and their readiness to help at all times. They adopted an Indian girl in 1977, Priya, uh, and uh, he is survived by their daughters, Lobet, Laverne, Priya, and their son, Jesse Carter, and of course, their families. So we mourn with them, that family, and grieve the, the loss of Dr. Lowry, one who contributed so much to Southern Asia. Dear friends, we have gathered here to pay a tribute of respect to our Southern Asia Division's beloved leader, 
in Dr. Raskui S. Lowry. A few days ago, Lowry Adventist College has also conducted this memorial service. On behalf of the Southern Asia Division, I stand here to pay a tribute of respect to our beloved departed leader, Dr. Oras Lowry. He was a president here in Southern Asia Division from 1962-80, and his life in Southern Asia Division is more than 65 years. I am, I am, I am told that his father was a missionary and his grandpa was a church pastor in the United States, so also his grandfather's brother. <clears throat> so it, in other words, uh, this family has been connected with the Adventist movement from the beginning of the church. He was an excellent administrator. Administrator of power excellence. Great Bible scholar, good Bible student, and marvelous philanthropist, and a wonderful and a wonderful human. His life has been a missionary focused and a son of a pioneer missionary and very peacefully passed away in his sleep. He was waiting for that particular day. He knew that his life on this earth will be over and he was waiting for to join with the Maker. He is sleeping in Jesus Christ, my dear friends. We need to emulate him in our life. That's a tribute that we would be paying to him this morning. It is our prayer on behalf of the Southern Age Division that may the Lord, good God, Lord, comfort Elder Buddy Lowry and all his relatives and friends. Dr. Oras Lowry has many friends in Southern Asia Division. They to join. And uh, SUD is blessed to have a marvelous steward for more than 65 years service. So on behalf of the Southern Asia Division, it is our privilege to pay a tribute of respect to our beloved departed leader in Dr. Raskoi S. Lowry. Last week, when I was sitting in my office, I usually sit very late and uh, Suddenly, a message came from my son. Dr. Lowry passed away a few minutes ago. And I was sent into a state of emotional turmoil. And I had this kind of turmoil only when we lost Pastor Christo a few weeks ago. Then when Pastor S. James died some years ago, and at this time, of course this was to be expected, he was 101 years old. Almost lived a life in biblical proportions. So immediately I opened my laptop and I sent a message to the Dennis Tidwell News, you all know that. And uh, 
I wrote whatever came to my mind. I sent it off to Dennis so that he can put it on the Tidbill News. And that's day for them, day breaking maybe. And immediately, Dennis writes to me, is he really dead? Here I'm conveying the news that he has passed away. And the news chronicler for our uh, Adventist group, particularly Southern Asia Adventist group, he writes back to me and says, is he really dead? Even at 101, his death came as a shock to many. A great life, a great man. Gordon gave us a brief history of his leadership to our church here. A marvelous leadership. And even before he became the president, my relationship with him began with great fear and trembling. Because he was a man of knowledge, discipline, and sometimes wonder. Here is the director of education department, always with a crew cut. And one who dressed very provocatively. Sometimes Spicer College would not have given him admission. And he was the education department director. But with all this fear and trembling, I felt in his presence, he was always a man of compassion. And he would listen carefully to what you had to say. And I was a pastor of the church as the first elder, Salisbury Park. And every time I spoke, he would, I will see him writing down, take notes. And during the week, he will call me up or invite me to his office and tell me what was right and what was wrong about my sermon. So I grew in the nurture of the wisdom of Dr. Lowry. Many of you young people may not know, but here was a missionary who lived the life of a missionary, devoted himself to the soil that he walked upon, and gave his life almost to the end for the furtherance of God's church here in Southern Asia. At that time, from Kabul to Colombo, from Rangoon to Karachi. We had a combined division of Pakistan, Afghanistan, Burma, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and India. Marvelous man. When he became the president, there were only, if I remember correctly, eight, would it be? Eight Indians who were members of the division committee. And within the first year of his leadership, he turned the division committee with 16 members on the division committee. 16, almost doubled. And he put leaders in the right place. He chose leaders. Of course, some of our missionaries were not happy about it. And suddenly there was an exodus. I can name people. Just exodus. But the church stood tall because we had a tall leader who understood the nature and the flow of history in India. Such a man as that. That was Dr. Lowry. There was another reason why I deeply loved him. 
You all know he is Dr. Lowry. But do you know what PhD he did? Even I didn't do that kind of a PhD. Dr. Lowry's PhD is an analysis of the philosophy of Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan pertaining to education. Now, you think of that. Think of that. His philosophy is Indian. And I learned much of philosophy from Dr. Lowry. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan became very dear to me. I immediately collected all the books that Dr. Radhakrishnan wrote. And they're all sitting in my son's library today. Because he initiated me to read Indian literature. I knew Milton, I knew Shakespeare, I knew Walt Lippmann, and I know all these guys. But I did not know Radhakrishnan, or Tagore, or all this, or Bharatiya, all these great writers and philosophers of our own country. Dr. Lowry introduced me to that. So I am much grateful for him. He's a man of the soil. He lived. And as if he did not want to leave India forever without a touch of India, he adopted. And I won't go into the details of that adoption. I was part of it. I had to verify and notify by a notary public sworn before the magistrate in Pune that the Dr. Lowry is a man of good character. I had to give him contact certificate in order to help him and his wife adopt this little girl, Priya. They named her Priya. They brought that baby. I wouldn't go into circumstances how they brought him. But that girl came into their home. To her, they gave the name Priya. In fact, that initiated a movement of adoption of children at Sarsavari Park. Great movement. How many lives the given shape and form because of this one person's witness to what Christianity must be. He lived the gospel. That's all I can say. He lived the gospel. And we mourn his loss. But 101 years and two months, what is there to cry about? But thank God that he will be among those who are included in this verse, blessed are they who die in the Lord. Thank God for a life like that. And those of us who knew him, who walked with him, who worked with him, who heard him preach, who lived with him, his wife and he, they loud potluck every now and then behind that bungalow. They were all participants in that. So those of us who knew him dearly, I would like to invite you first. Would you like to join me in standing in a moment of silence? Those who knew him and worked with him. Please, Pastor Nathaniel. Yes, yes, yes. Those who knew him, those who lived with him, and this is a great group. One by one, we are all going. We are on that route. We are on that queue. One day, we will also be gone. But here are they who keep the commandments of God. Today's message comes to us. Here are they who stand here, keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus. Jesus bears the testimony. Here is so and so buried in this place, here in so-and-so, who is marked on that place. And the mark of Jesus is with all of us. Now may the rest of the church of God, may we also stand and close our eyes and observe a few moments of silence in tribute to this great man who just passed away, left our presence. Would you please stand in a moment of prayer 
and the boys can stop talking. Okay, let's close our eyes in a moment of silence. Our gracious Father, we as a church, we have a marvelous history. We have inherited a history filled with saints, filled with those who have sacrificed their life for the glory and for the goodness of our Lord Jesus here in this country. And now today we remember what great things you have done for us, for us as a church, through the life and ministry of Roscoe Lowry. And now you have taken him for rest, for a little while of rest, until the clouds break open and we behold you coming or we, we are awakened by your invitation to inherit the kingdom you have prepared for us. We thank you for the life of Dr. Lowry, for the great contribution he has made for the development, growth, stability, and confluence of the church. We thank you for it. Now we also remember his son, his daughters, and the great family that loved him, even as they mourn and say goodbye to this man. Pray that he will bless each one of his family members, each one who remembers what he has been to them. May that family be comforted and embraced by the hope that even the dead shall arise soon when our Lord shall come. And as for us today, on this holy day, on this Sabbath, we acknowledge you as our God, as our Savior, as our soon returning King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Keep our lives committed to you. Keep our lives tender and ever ready to reach your invitation, either in life or in death, to be ready for you to be our living, loving, ever-present, ever-embracing Lord. May Jesus be real to all of us today. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Fowler, who initiated Dr. Gordon Christo and Pastor Selvin Murthy, who volunteered to make this very important memory. I'm still wondering whether should I say or not, but my conscience says we need to tell it to the church for the prayer. Mr. and Mrs. We Christian, as they're coming to the church, uh, met with a small accident. Mrs. Uh, Christian also got some injury and they are admitted in Gunam Hospital. So I request the presiding elder when he prays for the rest of them, he will also remember this family. I now give the time, the rest of the time to the presiding elder. We have some announcements. Uh, first announcement, some of our uh, church uh, members, they come to church very regularly, but they have not transferred their membership to this church. So we would like to welcome all of those who have not transferred their membership. Please transfer your membership to this church. This is very important 
when we attend this church for uh, some time, then our membership should be transferred. So we request you to please transfer your membership. On 23rd March, uh, there's going to be children divine service. All the children from credit roll to PowerPoint are welcomed. On March 16th, our church will be celebrating Global Youth Day. And this afternoon, three o'clock, children choir will meet in Pastor Renthley's house. Okay, there will be a women's prayer meeting in the uh, same place, sharp at 4.30 p.m. Uh, it's the same place. I don't know which one, but uh, I I'm sure that uh, ladies, they know where the meeting is going to be. Uh, we, when I was sitting in the church, I saw the flowers, uh, different colors, and this, this has, these flowers have made our church more beautiful. So these flowers are contributed by Mrs. Senior Christo. Uh, she is uh, celebrating her birthday, and uh, many of our uh, relatives are here, children, grandchildren, and uh, sister and others, they are here. She's uh, celebrating 19th birthday. God has given her long life. We pray that God be with her and give her many more birthdays to celebrate. And then uh, other contributors, uh, Mr. Manuel Kandagle and uh, family for their grand son, Ethan's birthday. Uh, they have five grandchildren. They are blessed and they have contributed for flowers. Then Raja, many of us we know, he's not Christian, not Adventist, not even Christian. But God has blessed his work and he wants to give thanks to God. So he has contributed for flowers. Prayer request is there. Uh, uh, dear members, dear believers, we need to pray for the students who are writing their public exam, standard 10th and 12th. We need to pray for uh, our students. We, uh, we need to pray for the sick people, Victoria Ambrose, Mr. Denzel Gomes, Mary Martin, Toby's mother, we need to pray for Pastor Samraj. His condition is quite critical. We need to pray for uh, him. Also, we need to pray for uh, Noel Rani's son who met with the accident. She's a teacher in our, one of the school here. So we need to pray for her son. Also, we need to pray for Sister Leela, who is recovering from her surgery in uh, Bangalore. Also, just now, as we got the report, Mr. and Mrs. Christian, they met with the accident. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for church roof repair. The church need a, a roof repaired, so we need to pray. So in this year, we may be able to repair it. God bless you all as we wait for the, uh, as we wait for the minister to come in. I request the church clerk to care for a business.
transfer of membership out Ajay Manuel Khandagle. Resolved to recommend to the general body the request of membership transfer of Ajay Manuel Khandagle of Jeevan Jyoti English Church, Hosu, Tamil Nadu, India to Burton upon Trent Church, UK. This is the second reading. Thank you, church clerk. What a coincidence. Ajay Manuel Kandagle is going out. Atul Manuel Kandagle is bringing the child inside. Next week, we are going to have the Global Youth Day. March 16 is Global Youth Day. Uh, the youth have an announcement and a request for each families. They're going for orphanage visits to different orphanages, one orphanage uh, will be led out by Mr. Richard Christian. Another group will be led out by Mr. Andrew. They are taking two school buses. We want to appreciate the uh, help of the school. They are requesting for care packages to the destitutes. And what all to bring? Kindly keep this in mind. You can kindly give soap, washing soap, bathing soap, toothbrush, comb, paste in one packet and from each family they are requesting two packets of food two packets of food either lime rice or tamarind rice i will send a voice sms in the whatsapp group also to remind you so next sabbath when you come you place all your packets right in front of the church 10 30 they are leaving out into Hosu town for doing ministry. Many have for and against idea about the Global Youth Day. Why do they want to go on Saturday? Why not in some other days? I'm happy at least one day in a year they are going out to see somebody. We need to encourage them. Okay? So if you have any theological debates, you fix an appointment with me. I will come and talk with you. We will pray about it. God bless the youth of our church. And uh, if you have any friends and relatives, uh, you can bring them because at least 100 of our church members will be out from 16 to 40 years. At least 100 will be out. So if you have your friends and relatives, bring them so we can encourage the preacher who is going to preach next week. God bless as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Lord, you're worthy to be praised, and I praise you. Lord, you're worthy to bow down to, and I bow down to you. Lord, you're worthy. Oh, 
merciful Father in heaven. We are so thankful to thee for the privilege that was given to each one of us to gather in this sanctuary. As we are going to worship thee, Lord in heaven, we pray you bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Happy Sabbath Church. For scripture reading from taken, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16, 17, 18. Let's turn our Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16, 17, 18. I'm reading from King James Version. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of good, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. May God bless us as we meditate upon these words. Shall we all rise and sing song number 316? Song number 316. Live out thy life within me. Shall we all stand? Live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of kings. Be the voice of the answer to all my questionings. Live
request congregation if uh, you can kneel down as we seek the Lord in prayer. Kind, merciful Father in heaven, our creator, our sustainer, and redeemer. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege you have given to us. We, thy children, can get together in your house to praise your name, to glorify your name, because it's because of your mercy we are still in this world. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Sabbath day. Thank you, Lord, you have blessed us throughout the week, and now we can come and praise your name. We ask thee to bless all of us as we worship thee. We are so thankful, Lord. You have blessed us with the abundant blessing. You have given us life, which is a very gift from you. We pray thee to help us so we may know the purpose of our life, and we may be able to do your work according to your will and for your glory. At this time, we are thankful, Lord. You have given long life to Mrs. Cristo. You have blessed her. You have blessed our family. We pray thee to continually bless her, give her good health. We are also thankful, Lord, for Manuel Kanagli and his family. You have blessed this family, you have given grandchildren. We pray thee to be with the grandson who's celebrating his birthday. Give him long life, Lord. We also pray thee to be with the Raja, our traveler. Although, Lord, he is not Christian, but still he believes that you are God who has blessed his work. We pray thee to continually bless him. We pray thee at this time, Heavenly Father, to be uh, with our students who are writing exams for uh, 10th standard and 12th standard. Give them wisdom, knowledge, so they may be able to write the correct answer and may be successful in their studies and may bring honor and glory to your name and happiness for the family. We pray thee to be with the sick ones. We especially remember Sister Victoria. We remember Denzel Gomes, we remember our uh, sister Mary Martin and Toby's mother. We also remember our pioneer pastor, leader, Pastor Samraj, who's uh, very sick. May your living hands be upon all these sick people so they may recover from their sickness and enjoy normal health. We also remember uh, Noel Mary's son who met with the accident and he's uh, in the hospital. Take care of him, Lord, give him speedy recovery. We also remember Mr. and Mrs. Christian. Uh, they met with the accident and they are admitted in the hospital. We pray thee to take care of them and uh, give them speedy recovery so they may come back to their home and praise your name. Bless all of us, Lord. We especially pray thee to be with Pastor Ambrose as he break the bread of life. Give him wisdom, knowledge, so whatever he speaks, it may bring honor and glory to your name, and we will be spiritually strengthened. We remember our sister churches all over the world. As your believers, they meet together, learn from your word. We pray thee to give them wisdom, knowledge, so they may be able to walk with you day by day. Once again, Lord, we commit ourselves into your care and keeping. Ask thee to bless us throughout this Sabbath hour. Keep us close to thee, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
today is my first time reading the offertory so pardon me for any mistakes today's offering appeal is for adventist world radio adventist world radio or awr for short is filling a unique role in the front lines of church outreach outreach Radio waves carry the gospel to places where church workers would otherwise have a very difficult time entering and people are listening from North Africa and Sudan to Bangladesh and China people are hearing God's love hearing of God's love for the first time through AWR's programs and they are responding with testimonies of transformed lives one new believer in e- e- Ethiopia wrote the following and i quote i found your station accidentally after listening to your programs for the last 2 years i started to go to church my life is changing gradually i would like to tell you that many people are listening to your programs god bless you end of quote adventist world radio programs can be heard in about 100 languages through shortwave local am and fm radio podcasts and social media the advantage of radio broadcasts is that they bypass harsh governments and hostile culture cultures bringing hope directly into people's homes and hearts but there are still millions of people who cannot hear the message of salvation in a language they can understand with your help awr can keep adding new languages and reach ever further into untouched territories we invite you to partner with awr in this vital ministry regularly the gc receives a portion of offerings received via the divisions and redistributes the funds to mission projects and institutions awr is included in that list additional offerings for awr may be given at any time in a marked envelope when i first read this appeal i wondered if we are broadcasting in about 100 languages then what about the remaining languages and countries so i just uh, checked up google and it seems that there are 195 countries and the un has accepted 193 two countries have observer status and they are the state of palestine and the holy see or the vatican so you can just guess about the remaining part but when you say 195 countries you begin to think that okay there is a balance of 95 languages but that's not the case there are, when i checked up how many languages there, there are in the world there's about 7000 languages and of which 23 languages comprise 50% of the world's population around 2500 languages have only 1000 members each so just some interesting information for you uh, i would like to in closing i would like to read from second corinthians 97 every man according as he purposeth in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or out of necessity for god loveth a cheerful giver in closing i request those who have tides and special offerings to come forward
I request the deacons to collect the remaining offerings. Thank you for the many ways we can reach the world for you. Bless the ministry of AWR through these our offerings. Bless all the people who could make offerings today. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Kispadar to share the story with small children. So nice to see you all sitting there in your Sabbath clothes and looking so wonderful. How are you children? Happy Sabbath to you all. I didn't hear anything. Happy Sabbath children. Ah, uh, that's better. Right. You know what I'm going to talk to you about today? I'm going to talk to you about faith. Now, who can tell me what faith is? Anybody? Go on. Trust in God. Good answer. Very good answer. Uh, trusting in God. Anyone else? No? All right. I want to volunteer. 
Who would like to volunteer? Come. Right. He's, he's volunteered. So I'm going to show you a little illustration of what faith is. Okay? Now, what is your name? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin, well done. Thank you for volunteering. Now, what I would like you to do is follow my instructions absolutely clearly. All right? Now, first of all, I would like you to go on the platform. You can go up there and you can stand there, okay? Now, what Kevin is going to do is, I hope, going to show you what faith is, okay? So, Kevin, you stand right there, a bit further back, a bit further back. That's it. Now, turn around and face that wall, all right? Now, the next thing I want, to do, want you to do is to close your eyes, okay? Are they cl closed tight? Can you see anything? All right, how many fingers do I have? Four? Good, you can't see a thing. All right, Kevin, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question, all right? Now, do you believe, all right, do you understand the question? Do you believe that there is a chair behind you? You don't believe, did you all see his head shake? You don't believe that there's a chair behind you. Okay. Now, Kevin, do you trust me? Good. He trusts me. Did you hear him? Now, Kevin, I'm going to tell you a very important thing. Kevin, there is a chair behind you. All right? Do you believe me? Yes. <laughs> Kevin believes that there's a chair behind him. Now, Kevin, if you believe from the bottom of your heart that there is a chair behind you, sit down. Don't move back, just sit down. Just sit down if you believe. <laughs> okay, sit down. Very good. Thank you, Kevin. You can open your eyes and you can come down. Now, I was hoping that Kevin wouldn't do what he did because that destroys my illustration to tell you about what faith is. Now, what the Bible says is that faith is being certain, absolutely certain of realities that you cannot see. Do you understand that? To be certain of something that you cannot see. Now, I'm going to give you another illustration, and I wonder if I could put this mic down, and if this works. Yes, it is. Now, just imagine that your faith is like a piece of string. Okay? Now, this is very tight string. And you know, sometimes when you come to know Jesus, your faith is not very strong. In fact, your faith might be very, very weak. Maybe just like this little string. And the devil will come and say, Aha, I know Kevin. He doesn't know Jesus very well. He doesn't pray very often. He does pray a little bit. And he reads his Bible a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and destroy his faith. So the devil comes and he destroys his faith. But there are some people, like maybe your tatas or your parties, who have known Jesus for many, many years, and their faith is very strong. And there's nothing Jesus, or there's nothing the devil can do to break the faith. Do you know anybody in the Bible who had faith so strong that the devil could not break or destroy his faith? Any ideas? Apart, apart from Jesus. You're very good. That's a good answer. Apart from Jesus. Abraham, he was actually called the father of faithfulness, right? And do you remember anyone else? Daniel? Do you remember Daniel's faith? Even though the king had made a decree, do not worship any other gods, Daniel carried on worshiping God, even though he knew that he would be thrown in the lion's den. 
So Daniel had very strong faith. But you know, as you grow up, your faith gets stronger. And why does it get stronger? Because you've been reading your Bible, you've been falling in love with Jesus, and your faith is getting stronger and stronger. Who doesn't like that when your faith gets strong? Who doesn't like that? Satan doesn't like that. So what he will do is he'll come and say, Aha, I know Kevin, he is getting stronger. He is reading his Bible more and more now, and he's praying to Jesus, but I am going to send some trials in his life. So he puts a knot in Kevin's faith. Maybe you'd been studying for an exam, and you failed a subject, and your faith is now weakened. And the devil says, I'm going to do something else. And he comes along and he makes his best friend tell lies about Kevin. So he ties another knot. And as if that's not enough, Satan gets his great big satanic scissors and he says, I know what I can do. I can really destroy Kevin's faith. And so he comes along and he cuts up his faith and he makes sure that it's in several pieces now, and Satan says to himself, aha, I've got Kevin, he's not only cut, up, I've cut his faith up, but I'm going to wrap him up in his satanic hands, and Satan says, I have got him in my hands, he cannot escape. Can Kevin escape? Is there a way? Yes, there is. And how can he do that? You know what Kevin can do? Kevin can call to Jesus, and he can just say, Jesus, help me, the devil has got me, I want to be set free. And Jesus comes and tells Kevin, Kevin, just reach out, and I will come to you. And Kevin reaches his hand out, and Jesus takes him by the hand, and Kevin is back to normal again. See that? And Jesus can do that to you. Now, why is it so important for Jesus to make sure that your faith is protected from being weakened or being destroyed? Why is it so important for Jesus that you remain faithful? Any ideas? What did you say, Sam? Because we are his children. Because we are his children. That's a very good answer. Any other reason? Any other reason why it's important for Jesus to make sure that our faith is strong? Do you know what it says in Hebrews? Without faith, what? It is impossible to please God. And guess who does not want us to please God? Satan. So he'll destroy our faith so that we know that we cannot please God. And in some, somewhere else, Jesus says, by grace ye are saved through what? Through faith in Jesus. Now, can you imagine? If we don't have faith in Jesus, our chances of being saved is very, very slim. Isn't that right? And he also says that Jesus has come to set his captives, what? Jesus has come to set his captives free. Remember that text. He has come to set his captives free. All right? So remember that if ever you have problems with your faith, who can you call to? Jesus. And may God bless all of you that you never allow the devil to trouble you because you, Jesus wants you to be in heaven when he comes. Okay? And may God bless you in your faith that you will remain faithful until he comes so that we can be in heaven with him. All right? Who would like to pray? Would you like to pray? Okay, come. What is your name? Christina Jasmine. Jasmine. That's a lovely name. Would you like to start praying? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Pray Jesus, thank you for this good day. Help us to remain, to remain faithful, faithful to, you, to you until you come. 
Till you come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Jasmine. God bless you all. You can go back to your seats now. like she is not uh, here. Okay. It's Tina. Tina is going to sing. Uh, Mrs. Grace Fields is not here. So we invite Tina to give special number. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. Yeah. 
Hallelujah for the lovely song. I thank God for the privilege he has given to me to speak to you all on the divine hour. And I want to thank the church and the church pastor for the privilege. And before I could uh, get into my message, my wife is with me. I think eight months back, I was in the church asking you to pray for her. That day we were, I was in tears. Today, I am here with happiness. So I invite my wife, Victoria, to come. And we want to thank all the church members for your prayer and support. All of, most of you visited personally. I'm very sure every one of you prayed for her. The youth group and the dead people all visited and encouraged us. And we want to thank God for the marvelous healing God has bestowed upon her on her treatment. She underwent, you know that chemotherapy, operation and radiation. And God helped her to sustain all the a treatment process and God made everything possible for us to go through the hardest period of the treatment time and um, with uh, gratitude and thanks we stand here uh, to say God is good and also I want to thank each one of you for your prayer in support. Continually, I want to continuously want to pray for her. We have completed the treatment process, but still she has to regain the health what is lost. So we hope and trust the Lord will do wonders and definitely he will get back the normal health. But also I want to appeal to you, don't ever lose your faith in God. He is the creator, sustainer, and redeemer. He will take care of us. So don't worry about the problems and difficulties. Always think about the goodness what God has rendered in your life. All the time, praise God for the blessings we have received. And uh, in the sight of God, all this, you know, Sickness and difficulties is nothing. He can do wonders. He can do miracles in our life. So she is the living witness for the church to see that God healed it. She underwent two chemo, I mean cancer treatment. 2012 she underwent and now 18 also she underwent. Both the treatments, God helped her to get back to normal life. So on behalf of our family, we want to thank each one of you. May God bless you. So this afternoon, I stand here to share the word of God. I'm very sure that Lord has a message for you and me. So I make an appeal to all the members to pay a close attention to this message so that we will be benefited. You know, as we go through the Corinthians, we could find Paul's advices to the church. And if you go back to the history of the background of the, you know,